are making the third prom dress in my series of making three different prom dresses. And like I've mentioned, this is the difficult, difficult, this is the difficult difficulty. Nice. Um, and like I mentioned, this is the hardest difficulty one I'm going to be making because I'm going to do like a corset design. This is supposed to be really, really pretty. I hope it turns out well. And for this dress, I'm also doing something kind of special. Noisy. And I'm going to try out using these appliques on it, which I'm really, really pumped about because I've never actually used appliques before. But I bought these ones off of Amazon and they are just gorgeous. And I'm really excited to like put them on. It's going to be so pretty. <laughs> And quite honestly, the appliques cost as much as the fabric and put me over budget for this. But hopefully they look really good. So for fabric-wise, I'm going to be using this Crystal Organza, and I bought 7 yards of it. And for the lining, I'm going to use this Crepe Back Satin, and I got 5 yards of this. And both of these fabrics are from Fabric Wholesale Direct. It's online. I'll link the fabric that I bought down below. And the colors match pretty closely. I'm pretty happy with it. This one's a little bit more aqua. And this one's more periwinkle, which I like better, but I think it'll work just fine with the overlay. And this dress was actually originally going to be pink, but I bought two pink fabrics for this, and it came in, and the pinks were like totally different shades, and I like kind of had a mini fabric crisis. So I decided to completely switch gears and buy this pretty blue fabric, because I knew that these would match a little bit closer, and they also matched the appliques I wanted to get. And then I'm going to take those other fabrics that I was no longer using and I'm going to turn those into completely different projects that you guys will see in the future and I'm really 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 pumped about them so it all works out in the end. Also I'm not mad about this blue color because I know I'm going to end up feeling like Cinderella and I'm really excited about that. So um, yeah I think, I think it's time to get started. That maybe wasn't a great idea. <laughs> Cutting organza can be quite the challenge because it's not an easy fabric to work with. So I was finding it easiest to take small sections and take a bunch of layers and pin them all together and then cut those pieces out. And the first pieces you're going to cut out are the front pieces. So here I have the center and the side piece. And I'm going to cut these ones out of the organza. But then I'm also going to cut very similar ones out of the lining fabric, except they're going to be a little bit shorter and the center one is cut into two pieces. And so basically I'm just kind of rounding out the bottom pieces and cutting it in half. So I added in their measurements, but you guys can totally just copy the other pieces and basically just cut the bottoms. And then here we have the back piece. This one's pretty straightforward. It's just a rectangle because we're going to add darts into it. And this piece here is just a long strip of the organza fabric that I'm going to use to make straps later. I made it pretty thick so that we can double it up and make sure it's long enough to make two straps out of. Then I also cut some strips out of the lining fabric and this is to make the little casings for our boning. Again, they don't have to be very thick. I ended up cutting this piece in half. And then for the skirt pieces, here is the gigantic overlay. Essentially, it's just a big rectangle. And then here is the skirt lining. And I did make this one a circle skirt so we wouldn't have as much fabric up at top that we would have to gather. And for the lining skirt, I did only end up cutting one out because I was able to cut mine on the fold. But if your fabric is not big enough to get one single piece, you can just cut this piece into two and sew up one of the sides. I'm honestly not totally sure how I'm going to sew this dress yet, but it's time to get started. The first thing I know I'm going to do is I'm going to take three layers of my pieces here for the front and on the side pieces, just dividing this in half, and I'm going to baste all around the edges. And I decided to use three layers just to get the level of opacity that I wanted. With this, it's really just important that you lay it out as flat as you can get it and just baste around it super carefully. And I'm also going to do that on the back pieces. Now that the pieces have all been basted, it's time to start on the front seams. So I'm going to take our side pieces here, and I'm going to put them on top of the center piece, and right now I'm just going to sew them all together. Next, to finish up the French seams, we're going to trim these really close to the edge that we just sewed. And then I'm going to fold it back the other way over top the seam. And I'm going to stitch this seam again, encasing that seam, so we have no raw edges. Now you should have the organza bodice and all the finished seams. Now we're going to put some darts in the back pieces of the organza. So I'm just going to fold it in half a little bit shorter on one side than the other. And I'm going to make a dart that takes it in at one inch at the bottom and is seven inches long. 
And with the darts done, I'm going to take the side that was slightly shorter when we folded it in half and sew that side to the side piece of the bodice. And because we're doing French seams, it's really important that you sew them wrong sides together first so that when you flip them out and re-sew it, you have the right sides together. And now it's time to sew up the little lining pieces. So basically, I'm just going to take one of either piece and put the curved edges together and sew it right up. So after I sewed up the little like cup pieces, I just pinned a pair of them to the organza bodice just to get a feel for what it was going to look like. And I'm a little unsure of it right now, but I'm really hoping that if I continue with it, I'm going to really like it. Because I think it looks a little funky, but I think we're just going to go for it. And I spent some time pinning them up just to get like a shape that I wanted. So I'm going to just keep this shape by using a water soluble pencil and tracing around it. Or if you accidentally sat on your tailor's chalk and broke it in half, you can use that as well. And once I trace around it, I'm going to cut that the same on all of the pieces. Now I'm going to take two of these pieces and put them pretty side to pretty side. And starting from this edge right here, I'm going to sew down this side, all around the bottom, and up until we reach this corner here. I took all the little satin pieces to the iron and just made them all flat. And then I pinned them to the organza layer and I made sure that they like fit nicely like how I want them to. And now I'm just going to basically put some little stitches in them to keep this in place. I'm going to put a few stitches down either side here, some right on the seam of the organza layer just to hold this down here. And then I might go ahead and hand stitch this part up just to make sure that they like stay like nice and together. I took those little satin strips that we cut out and I took them to the iron and I just folded all the edges in so that they would fit into my boning. And for the boning, what I did is, <laughs> my boning is a little bit too thick because I buy it in these big rolls from Amazon. And so what I did to make it a little bit thinner is I cut it in half and then zigzagged down both of the edges to keep all the little plastic parts in. So now we have this very sleek looking boning. And I figured out the placement that I'll show you guys in a minute. So basically the next step is to just take these little strips that we cut out and I'm going to fold the top in so that we don't have any raw edges and I'm going to sew down either side to make a little casing for our boning down all the parts that we want it. So this is my boning placement and I'm going to have one down either side seam, one down the center, and then two down these little seams too. So the first thing on the to-do list is figuring out how to finish up the top edge of the bodice. And I think I know how I want to do it because I'm going to use some bias tape across the top. But before we put the bias tape in, we need to attach some straps to it. So it took me a few tries, but I finally figured out a way to make organza straps because the first time I tried to do two layers of it and fold it over and it just wasn't turning out right. And the other version I tried was very itchy. <laughs> But I think I finally have one that I'm very happy with, so I will show you guys how I did it. And then we need to do it to this whole long strip. The way that I got this cute little strap is by taking this organza piece, and I already took it to the iron and just gave it a crease with a very low setting on your iron so it doesn't melt. And I'm going to just cut it down quite a bit, making sure to leave the folded edge. And the trick with this is that the folded edge is what gives us the finished edge. So I'm going to take the raw sides and I'm going to fold them over to the center first. And then I'm going to take the folded edge and put that on top and then put our pin through both the layers. And then I just sewed across it right on the folded edge. Strap's made! Next, we need to do the bias tape. And the way you make bias tape, it's kind of similar to the casings that we had to make. The main difference is that we need to cut this one on the bias of the fabric, which means on a 45 degree angle. So I just laid out my fabric and cut as long of a strip as I could, and then folded either side of the edges in. And I haven't cut it yet, just because we're going to cut it anyway, so I just thought it'd be easier to do that later. I'm going to attach the bias tape all the way across the top of the bodice. But first, like I said, we're going to pin our straps in place just so when we sew across it, it's already finished. So now we need to sew the bias tape all along the top, and I did pin these straps to the tops and to the sides. And the way you do the bias tape is you just are going to sew down one edge here of the folds all the way around, and then we're going to cut that super thin, turn this up, turn it around, and basically sew again on the other side. 
And also for the v-neck, what I did is I took some of my bias tape and I folded it in half. And then I made this kind of zigzagging shape on the folds of the bias tape so that when it turns out, it'll have that perfect v-neck shape. I also did the same thing on the strap so you get the dart up there. And I'm just going to very carefully sew all around this. Also, as a side note, there is no boning in it right now because we don't want to sew that across either. Next, we're gonna cut down the fabric and the bias tape just a little bit. And I'm going to take our bias tape and fold this edge up fold it down, and then on the back side, I'm going to pin it in place and sew right across the bottom. And now we have a totally finished edge, which is very good because that organza was getting out of hand. And now the very, very last thing to do on the bodice is to put in our boning. So I'm just gonna take our little pieces and it's really important to round out the top edges because we don't want them to accidentally poke through our fabric. And then I'm just going to slide them through into their place. Skirt time, which is always my favorite time. I get very excited to put it all together. For the overlay of the skirt, I cut out four of these rectangle pieces. So that means they're going to have two layers. So I'm just going to take two pieces and sew French seams down either side to put it all together. the two organza skirt pieces and I pin them together at their side seams and across the top just to hold it all together and then because I want to put a slit in this dress what I did is I cut one side of it open 15 and a half inches away from one of the side seams right here because I calculated and that would be the right distance away to for the gathering to all be even and that would make it line up with right where the boning is on the right side and then on the back I just made a nine inch slit down it so that we have a place to put the zipper and then on the lining skirt, because I cut it on the fold, I just made that the slit, and then I cut another nine inch slit down the back. So the next step on the skirt is to do two basting stitches all across the top, so we can finally gather all of it up, and I'm very excited about this. Now that this is all basted, we need to know how much we need to gather it, so I'm going to take our lining skirt, and I'm going to pin the fronts and backs together. And now that it's pinned, there is a lot more organza than there is skirt. So I'm going to take our basting threads and if you pull two of them, you can ruffle up all of this fabric. So I'm going to keep pulling and ruffling until it looks all even. And then I'm going to pin it and baste this all the way around. It's so fluffy. Before I sew the waistline to the bodice, I really want to sew up the slit. So I just pinned the sides of the slit together, making sure to catch all the organza layers. And I'm going to sew down this for 13 inches. And to keep from all of the organza layers going absolutely insane, I'm going to push back the satin part of this and I'm going to cut down the organza. Then I'm going to do a zigzag on top of the satin layer and that should fully encase the organza. And from there, to finish up all of the edges on the slit, I'm going to fold all of these layers in and do a hem on them, starting from where we stopped sewing them all together. The next step on the dress is very exciting because we are finally putting it all together and we need to attach the skirt and the bodice together. So the most important thing that I'm going to line up while sewing the skirt on is I need to get the slit with the boning coming off of the bodice. So I'm going to do it right underneath the bust here, and I'm going to just put those together first, and then from there I'm going to pin everything around and sew it all together. But actually, I just remembered before we do that, it's really, really important that we push all of our boning out a little bit, and just take a little bit off of the top and round out all of those edges before we sew it together, because we don't want to sew through our boning. And now we can go ahead and pin and sew them all together. It's 
so pretty. It's looking so good. I'm so in love with it right now. And because the waist is full of these like fraying, scraggly parts, I need to figure out how to make that a finished edge. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that seam down very, very thin. And then I just made some double fold bias tape, which is essentially the same thing as single fold bias tape, except after you make it, you just fold it in half so that it makes one full casing. So I'm basically just going to put this on top of that seam and just sew it all the way around. And that should really take care of all the raw edges there. You know what, because this is being so difficult, I think I'm actually going to zigzag this edge first just to keep everything together and make it a little bit flatter and then I think this will go on a lot smoother afterwards. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, yeah, that is much easier, highly recommend. And now I'm just going to take out all of the basting stitches that we put in the skirt. Now it's time to put the invisible zipper down the back. And this one is not exactly the lining color, but I think it'll be close enough. The only reason I'm concerned is because obviously in the back we're going to have to be able to see it because it's sheer, so there's no really good way to hide it. But I think that it's going to be okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in. The zipper is in, and the only problem with this is I had to figure out a way to get rid of all of the raw edges of the organza fabric that was going down the zipper because, of course, that's going to get out of control because if you guys haven't noticed, it sheds like crazy throughout this whole project, and I know I've mentioned it like seven times, but I'm saying it again. So it took me a few ideas just to get one that worked really well, but I actually came up with a really good idea that also um, covers the color of the zipper through the organza layer. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that so we can finish up the zipper. The way I did this is I basically just folded the organza layer onto the zipper little flap here and I sewed them together and it makes the zipper the same color through the organza layer and gets rid of all the raw edges. So that was a win-win. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the fabric a little bit above the zipper. And now I'm going to take this fabric and fold over the edge one time and pin it onto the zipper flap. And I'm just going to do that all the way down and stitch it. Now that the raw edges of the zipper are all finished up, the only raw edges left to deal with are on the hem. So I just cut it so that it would be a good length after I hemmed it with my heels on. And for some reason that was like quite a journey to like get all three layers to be the same length. I don't know why it was just like such a problem for me, but I think it's finally okay. So I'm just going to do a simple hem on all of the individual layers, which is a lot. Day. Last night I finished hemming the dress, which was surprisingly a challenge for some reason. Just all these layers did not want to lay quite right. But now the dress is pretty much done. I mean, like, if you don't want to do appliques, which are optional, the dress is completely done. But I think I'm going to go ahead and stitch on some of these. I've never actually used appliques before, but I think the basics of it is I'm just going to trim around all the edges as best as I can, and then I'm going to pin them where I want them and just hand stitch them on. I know some people use a machine to stitch them on, but I think I'm just going to be careful and hand stitch all of mine. And here is the very final prom dress. This one is definitely the most like classic prom look out of the three and it's honestly like nicer than the prom dress I even wore to my prom. And I really do love how it turned out. I think that the appliques made it really special, but I am just in love with how the skirt turned out. The crystal organza was just catching the light beautifully and it's just so light and airy. This is also the first full length dress I've ever done with a slit, so I had a lot of fun modeling this one. And I think this dress is a pretty good way to wrap up my mini prom dress series. I really hope you guys liked it. I had so much fun making these dresses and I really hope this inspires you guys to maybe make your own prom dress and give some of these dresses a try. And if you do, you can always send me a picture on Instagram. I'd love to see them. And I really hope that you guys have a good rest of your day and I will see you guys next Friday. Bye!